Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. We're going to have Brett Lehman, who is the Director of Strategic Accounts at PCX. So welcome, Brett. How are you doing? Good, Chris. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm doing well, sir. Thank you so much. I, lo- I love these hero conversations because it just get to know our people, the heroes of industry. Get us started. Tell us about your journey. Well, how much time do you have? <laughs> you so, just roll as much as you want. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm someone who's been very fortunate that I feel like everything I've done in my career has kind of led me to the next step. You know, mm-hmm. I started out of college at IBM a long time ago uh, in construction of a, a semiconductor fab plant up in New York. And so I got familiarity with large building systems and, and things like that. Decided I wanted to try, you know, IBM offers a lot of opportunities. So I wanted to try product development, got into the design of cooling systems for IT, you know, network machines, uh, ser- servers, system X servers. And so long about 2020, about 20 years ago, IBM introduced blade servers into the market. And blade servers are essentially very highly densely packed servers. So it was a, re- it was a real game changer in terms of how much power could be stacked into a certain amount of space now in a data center. Mm-hmm. And, and IBM's customers were having horrible issues trying to figure out how do we cool this? Where do we put this? How do we spread it out? And so I, as, as somebody who helped to design the cooling systems of the servers, but also had some building experience, building system experience, um, I had salespeople starting to call me and say, hey, would you go talk to this bank or that customer and help them understand how they can accommodate this, this, this power density and, and the amount of space they have? That led me into a, a global services role that you know I, I held for some time where I just kind of was a subject matter expert with teams around the globe um, talking about data center design, build, operations, all those kinds of things. And as my path started to stray away from from data centers, I, that's really my passion. Uh, it started to stray away there. Um, I recalled a company down here in North Carolina, just down the road from me, that that I had helped qualify as a supplier for IBM, and and PCX built a number of modular data centers uh, for IBM customers. And so uh, now I'm here and uh, back in the data center space, and really happy to to be there. That is awesome. So where'd you go to school at? I went to Penn State. Grew up in Western Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. Great school. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. So you, how long have you been in uh, North Carolina? Long time. Since 1989. Okay. All right. So plus you're years. Fish. It's home. It's home yeah. now. Yeah, it's got to be home for you. But it's been That's that right. long, right? <laughs> yeah. Very much. <laughs> that is great. So you know, you've been out here a long time. You've been working with the industry. What do you see? Because you're you're a director of strategic strategic accounts, so you're definitely inside the know on a lot of accounts. What do you see as the biggest challenge a lot of these accounts are facing? I think there are two things. So I, I I'll go back to where I you know I, I mentioned a minute ago about twenty years ago, where uh-huh. um, there was a time when a, a, an IT operator, if they had a new application they wanted to deploy, they put a new server in the data center and. You know, little by little, those racks filled up and then the racks kind of grew and and you had what they called server sprawl. And you had a lot of IT servers sitting running at 6% utilization, consuming a lot of power. Uh, as, as somebody who tested those systems, I know that to go from an idle mode to a very heavily, uh, you're running heavy traffic, the power on them really doesn't go up that much. It's It's incremental. The idle, the idle powers is quite high, high in terms of okay. how they how they run. And so, the more you can run the server and utilize it, the more power you get, the more compute power you get for less electric for for the amount of electricity you're you're spending. Um, so that led to you know multi threading of processors, and that led to multi processor systems, and then then we started to virtualize machines and used to carve up a server into X amount of compute, memory, and storage, and then that would become 10 servers, right? And you would get 10 servers for for the price of one, essentially. And now with cloud, you've got microservices and and containers, and and the compute power has been diced up so fine, and it's managed at such a such a a, a fine increment. Um, I wonder what's next. You know, we've really taken the kind of technology that. That, that these things have been built on and, and really gotten a lot 
maybe I don't want to say as much mileage out of it as we're going to get. I'm not I'm not an expert in the field, but it, we're getting an awful lot more compute power for the amp out of the wall socket than we used to. And mm-hmm. so I wonder, you know, what will the challenges be around quantum computing? Um, I know it's got to run really cold. So how do you build an environment that's both economical and reliable and practical to support the next generation of technology? I think that's that's a little ways down the road, but that's one thing that that I think comes to mind. Um, the other one I would touch on is is about sustainability. Um, we've 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 gotten a lot of mileage out of the IT equipment. It does a lot more than it used to do for the uh, for the amount of power we put into it. So now it's it's very it's very efficient. We talk about scope one and two emissions. A lot of customers do now. You know, it's scope one is how efficiently do I operate? Systems are already pretty efficient. We've gotten pretty good at running efficient cooling systems. Scope two emissions uh, go to what kind of power am I am I consuming? The big cloud companies are are setting up pre-purchase agreements for wind power, solar power. That's a big thing. So with my indirect costs in my supply chain, how do I how do I limit that? And it's going to become for the industry. How do we? We now have a a very economical to build, very economical to operate modular data center. Mm-hmm. How do we build it more efficiently? And so, you know, we're having conversations with people that build fully recyclable recyclable wall panels that we could that we could utilize that are that are strong, um, that would provide all the same you know ease of ease of fabrication but also be fully recyclable and better for the environment. So I think we'll be looking for different materials to build from. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like innovation is just at the, the forefront of everything that you're looking at in the future. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So I'm curious now what you kind of, you talked about it earlier. There there's myths around data centers. Go ahead. Let's debunk one for us. Yeah. I don't know if it's, if it's debunking a myth so much as it is, um, um, it may be a knock on, on the data center industry. I think for years we've been saying, and it's a fact, it's true, that the data center industry probably consumes 2% of the power uh, on the face of the planet, or the equivalent of the, of the airline industry. Um, but I think what gets lost in that is the world's growing, power consumption is going up everywhere. And the fact that the IT industry is still at 2% is, 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 is quite a statement when you think about what I talked about earlier from going from we take an entire pizza box server for a new application and put it in a rack. So now uh, we're running applications in the cloud that can run in Dallas or they can run in Chicago or London. And we just move those things around. They're constructed on such a fine uh, amount of resource that you can move them anywhere. And, and it's really very, very efficient. It's, it's, I don't know what the, I don't know what the number is, but it's many, many times more efficient from a compute power standpoint than it was 20 years ago. So I think sometimes we just get caught up in you know, how much electricity is used and we lose sight of the fact that there's a whole lot more work being done 20 years ago than, than there was 20 years ago. There have been big efficiency gains made. Wow, that's incredible. Now, if somebody wants to get into this data center world, uh, Brett, what, what do they need to be studying, going? I mean, what, what, what's the degrees? I mean, what backgrounds? I'm trying to get like some Yeah, that's a great question. That that's a great question because that's that's a topic that's getting a lot of discussion in the data center industry today. Uh, I went to a conference last week and and you know one of the speakers said, "Look around the room. You, do you see anybody that doesn't look like you?" And it it really was. It was a bunch of middle aged men, and and through attrition, um, the people with that knowledge are going to be retiring in the next you know ten fifteen years. And mm-hmm. there's not a clear path into the data center industry. So there's a lot of discussion about how do we how do we improve that? Um, so um, I think it speaks to mentoring, uh, fundamental background, electrical and mechanical engineers, uh, computer engineers. That's where you get started. But okay. typically that doesn't necessarily that doesn't necessarily wind you up in a data center. Mechanical and electrical engineers can do can do lots of things. And, and data centers are kind of special like hospitals because of the mission critical nature of what they do. So it's the kind of thing about building in reliability and, and things like that, that takes some time to gain experience around. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of talk about how we do that. This, the seven by 24 exchange um, uh, group has started uh, an international data center day. 
Um, that's uh, something that we're it's 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 in, kind of in conjunction with Earth Day. It's around the same time, and uh, it's it's an opportunity for us to reach out to local community colleges, maybe high schools in in the Raleigh Durham area. Here we have a lot of a lot of major universities just to bring people in and see whether it's from an engineer down to a welder or an electrician. We're going to need more people in this industry going forward, and and the efforts are starting now to to try and do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So it sounds like you know, there's a lot of of opportunities in particular for um, people that, that that want to come into the data center world. I'm curious around co-ops and internships, you know, so far as because that's that's one way you can develop mentorships as well, right? You through those programs. So, you know, do they do those exist and what do they look like? Are they more engineering technical type co-ops or more business related? I'm just curious, what what are you seeing there in your industry? So I, I think we need to get to that. Um, you know, when I've been in product development roles, I had a lot of great experience, especially in this area, being close to North Carolina State University, good engineering school, mm -hmm. uh, being able to recruit um, students as, you know, essentially part time help, whether it was just the summer or whether, you know, they 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 work part time through their school years. And by the time they were ready to graduate, yeah, they were in addition to their course load, they were very well versed in. In, in the work we were doing in, in the development lab. I don't see that in the data center space right now. Um, I would say, um, uh, you know, apprenticeships in the shop would be would be a good way to go. And yeah. we have talked about, in, in, in addition, you know, finding some engineering students to come in and, and work a summer or work part-time while they're in college. Because like you said, there, there's no better way than, you know, at, at, at that age to be grooming somebody and if, if they have the same passion for the industry that everybody else around them does, that's pretty easy to convey that. Then, um, yeah, you've got you've got you've got a, a channel of future employees coming. in. I think we need to get back to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It sounds like that's there's some opportunity there, which is which is always good. It's always good to talk about these things because you never know, you know, what can what can grow from there. So curious for you, Brett, when at the work that you're doing at PCX. When you've had a great day, you've crushed it. You're smiling. You're happy. You're you're, you're petting the dog instead of kicking the dog. What'd you do that day? Uh, I think it's something that has a meaningful outcome. Um, and maybe I'm I'm going to be a little pie in the sky here because uh, it doesn't happen every day, right? There sometimes right. these things are these are these are moonshots. Uh, but I just one example. You know, I worked on a supercomputer cluster where uh, the, my biggest challenge was how do I work with an engineer and a and a and a data center. Uh, service provider to get a solution installed as quickly as possible because this university was recruiting a high profile researcher and this compute cluster was tied very closely to, you know, his timing on arriving at the university. And so we were, we were very successful with it, long story short, but that was great. But what, what really got me was when I got home after being invited to the grand opening of this, this facility and, you know, the lieutenant governor of the state of Georgia was there and talked about the tremendous benefit that this compute cluster was going to provide to, you know, not just the local community, but, you know, society in general with, uh -huh. you know, looking for ways to cure cancer, you know, running all the, the, the simulations on protein simulations and things like that, that, that were part of this research. And it's like, wow, you know, most of the time I, I get a set of requirements. It's like solve this problem you don't always hear what the real world, there's always some type of real world application that's being satisfied there. And it's not always as, as, as high an impact as what I just described, but that's, that's, that's what really gets me going. I love it. And it sounds like a, such a, a great purpose right there as well. So let's take some, uh, a turn off of your professional path, Brett. Let's talk about you outside of work. What do you do, enjoy doing for fun? Well, I've got I've got three kids. They're all grown and out of the house. And our 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 oldest daughter has uh, uh, you know brought us our first grandchild in the last year and a half. So they live close by. We get a we get a lot of enjoyment out of out of that part of our lives now. Um, I like to play golf. I like music. Um, you know, a couple of my kids have the same kind of taste that I do in music. So we'll we'll from time to time uh, go uh, decide on on a, on a show we want to go see together and. Pre-COVID, we did that an awful lot. We haven't done it as much lately, but that's uh, that's always fun too. But um, you know, being an engineer where things are so very precise, I think uh, one of the things I like most is photography. I like to try and find different ways 
of looking at things or, or capturing something in a moment or even over a, a lapse of time, right? That, uh, yeah. that, that isn't ordinarily how you would look at it. That's really cool, man. So you, so you do photography now from a music standpoint, what, what are you guys going to? What, what, what do you enjoy? Oh, it's mostly, mostly eighties bands, eighties, <laughs> nineties. Okay. Okay. But we've, we've seen some of the big ones, right? So we've seen, and I, I think one of my daughters is, is keeping a, keeping track of, you know, how many people have we seen that earn the rock and roll hall of fame? Now that's a pretty long list, right? But we've seen the stones and Eric Clapton and, and Tom Petty, um, you know, a lot of those eighties bands. That's awesome. So what's, what's your favorite one? Oh, you love Marie Hayden, Bruce Springsteen. Okay. Okay. I hear you, buddy. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that information. So what about outside of bands, podcasts, YouTube channels, books, anything that you find value in that you enjoy? Love to hear and get that insight from you. Yeah, that, no real. Um, you know, I subscribe to a number of things that pop up in my inbox all the time. I've I found Data Center Frontier to to offer an awful lot of relevant up to date, you know, current events information. That's that's probably my main source for how I keep up um, with the industry. Um, but but YouTube's fantastic. You know, if you want to fix something, if you want to want to learn to play a song on something, I mean, you can find anything on YouTube. That's right. That's right. It's out there, in, including this podcast. So hopefully, <laughs> yeah, if, you, right, if you're yeah. listening and you want to see the video, go check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe there. Yeah. So let's 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 jump into our lightning round, Brett. Uh, have a little fun here with it. We always do this on every hero episode. This is uh, just usually fun for our listeners as well. So what's your favorite food? I always start off easy with the food stuff. So what's your favorite food? Pizza. Oh man. What any, any type of, uh, what, what's on that pizza, man? Uh, best combination, pepperoni, onions, and green peppers. Okay. All right. Then deep, deep crust, deep dish. What, what you going with? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like it. I like it. Maybe not Chicago style, but definitely a thicker crust. Okay, all right. Not, not thin and crispy. I got you, got you. What about adult beverage? Anything to wash that pizza down with? Yeah, good red wine. Good red wine. Spent uh, a two week vacation in Italy a few years ago and got to really come to like a lot of really good uh, Italian wines. Um, locally, though, I don't know if you've heard of the Prisoner. It's a red blend, California wine. Okay. Really good. That's awesome. Great. So what's uh, what's something that's on your nightstand? Wow, I don't have a nightstand. Um, oh, okay. Maybe maybe used to be a book. Probably now it's an iPad that's got an ebook on it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And on that iPad, what's your favorite app? I mean, oh, I thought you were going to ask about an author. I'll give you I'll give you an author instead. I mean, I'm about out of his books. It's Stephen King. Um app i'm probably still i'm still doing youtube or 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 sometime some okay favorite game of the moment could be anything gotcha i got you okay so what's your all-time favorite movie all-time favorite movie ah uh, probably um field of dreams oh good movie i like nice. a lot of chevy chase comedies but you know those aren't those aren't exactly they're not award winners. I Field of right. Dreams was 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 a great story. Love it. Now, Field of Dreams. I'm assuming you're a baseball guy. So, what's your what's your sports team? Uh you know, ironically, I don't follow a lot of baseball. Now, I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, so I uh, went to Penn State. So, I'm a, I'm yep. a huge Penn State football fan. Um, even though I've been in North Carolina 30 years, still a big Steeler fan. Going to the Steelers Panthers game next week, uh, as Ooh, a matter nice. of fact. But uh, we've got a. We, I'm also a big hockey fan, and we've got. Uh, an NHL team here in, in Raleigh. So I'm a big Carolina Hurricanes fan too. Oh yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, last question there, Brett, dogs or cats? Oh, dogs all the way. All right. All right. Just I'm surprised mine hasn't been in here jumping up on my chair while I've been on with you. What kind of dog do you have? He's a black lab, two year old black lab. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Well, this has been a great, great episode with you here, Brett. So we always wrap up eco ask why with the why. So if somebody wants to know what your personal why is, where are you going to tell them? I like to keep busy. I like to be challenged. Um, you know, I find when I have, there are times when I want nothing to do, but any kind of extended period of time with nothing to do is, is, is not good time. So uh -huh. uh, I like to be doing something meaningful, something that's of value, uh, maybe something that helps somebody else. I love it. Thank you. Well, 
It's been a pleasure to get to know you. Where should the listeners go to connect with you or PCX to learn more? Yeah, so PCX Corp, uh, www.pcxcorp.com is where we've got uh, you know all our information about our product offerings, blogs, uh, thought leadership content, things like that. Uh, personally, LinkedIn's the best place. I've got a uh, I've got a Wix site, link to a Wix site on myself personally, where I've got some some clips of uh, conference presentations and 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 some you know information on patents that I hold and things like that. If anybody's that interested, uh, I do have some personal information linked up on LinkedIn. All right, we'll, we'll make sure we we have that stuff synced up in the show notes for you listeners. And Brett, is there anything else you'd like to share today? Yeah, I think that's I think I'm good. This has been this has been fun, Chris. Well, thank you so much, sir, for taking the time and for all the information you shared today on Eco Ask Why. Absolutely. Brett is one cool guy, and I really enjoy getting to know him. And and from Pennsylvania to here in North Carolina, he has done a, doing some incredible things in industry. Has a uh, such a passion for helping others and uh, the technology. He's so amped up about it, right? You could just feel how energetic he was over the technology what he's doing, his career, definitely making a huge impact. Sounds like he's a new granddad now, so he's got a lot going on at home too. Uh, just a really cool conversation there. So hopefully you want to learn more about Brett and connect with him. Again, check out the show notes. There will be have ways for you to connect with him directly on LinkedIn. And then definitely check out PCX, all the wonderful solutions that they're doing. We love those guys. They're, they're one of our uh, premier partners here at ECO. Highly recommend you checking out their solutions and seeing if a modular data center would fit your would fit your needs. So uh, if you're enjoying Eco Ask Why, we would ask you to give us a rating and review. Five stars would be wonderful. One to two sentence review would help tremendously. Uh, so thank you again for taking the time to listen to Brett's story from our hero there. So enjoy this. Come back next week. We'll have another episode for you. And remember to keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S. W-H-Y dot com.